to make a noise. Thank you. All right. I think we are squared away here. This is great. Welcome, everybody. Sorry we're a little late. We had to do a computer restart. Uh, I got that. Um, we are launch, moving on in our psalm series. And I think you can see most people who are in the room. And uh, so make sure you let us know if you can't hear, okay? But I'm pretty sure we got it set up. Uh, so welcome everybody at home and here in person. We're growing in person, which is cool. And I know I'm seeing some folks I haven't seen for a while, which is so exciting just to... Every Sunday now, you know, we have people who are newly re-entering worship um, and uh, that's, that's really great to see people. Um, and then also welcome to our Facebook viewers and those that might be watching this from a recording. We are starting a series this summer called Summer in the Psalms. Last week we kicked things off with Psalm 130, and that was really great study. I really enjoyed that. And so this week we're doing Psalm 8 and perhaps nine, depending on how far we get. Uh, and let's see. And so the title of this study is Knowing Our Place. Has anybody ever said you need to know your place, you know, when you're stepping out of line or something? <laughs> so, uh, we'll see if that title rings true with this psalm. So Psalm 8. Oh, we lost you. Not here. We lost uh, you. Oh, yeah. Pastor we lost Bill. You. Lost your sound. Pastor Bill, lost you. Lost your sound. Uh. You're still talking? That's what I got there, but it says that I'm muted, like, it almost appears. Is it because I highlighted? Um, we can this. I can hear you now. No, but that's the phone. But I've, I've done that before. Let me unhighlight. We can hear you. Yeah. Now we can hear you. Yeah. Can yeah. you guys hear me? Now we can. You can. Bless you. Okay. Thanks for waving at me. How much of what I said did you hear? <laughs> Psalm eight. <laughs> All right, so we're going to look at Psalm 8. Let me just go here. This will be a better view with the people. Know your place. See me. Um, and uh, they want to see uh, all of your faces up there. So, uh, yeah, Psalm 8, which is knowing our place and talks about the role and, and uh, how do we understand human nature? How do we understand what's the role of a human being? And so with that in mind, we'll kind of launch into this. We'll think about how it helps us, how it defines who we're supposed to be, how, where do we see Christ? Eight. All right. So let me open us with the prayer. Gracious and loving God, thank you that we're together today, and thank you that you've given us the gift of your word. Let it be fruitful, our time be fruitful and helpful, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So what we're going to do now is we are going to try and share a screen here. Where is it? Let's see. It's there somewhere. Okay. There it is. All right. I'm going to put you guys over here. Actually, let's put this like right here. We'll make this bigger so, we'll tr so in-house we can see as many of you as we possibly can. There we go. All right. So here we are, Psalm 8. This, let's go to Psalm 8. So does anybody want to read this from your Bible and in-house or at home? You can read it. We, we'll be able to hear you. Anybody at home want to read it? Gloria, how are you doing there? Are you up for reading? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Oh, Lord, our Lord. How oh, oh, now we're, you're, you're muted again. Let's see. Can you hear me but now? For some reason. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> I can. No, we can't. You, at home, you can hear, but we, <laughs> yeah, we had this all set up. Huh. Mislaid plans and lights. Oh, Justin. Okay, so we're going to read from here. <laughs> Because you guys can still hear us and you can hear each other, but we can't hear you. So, oh, here you So, Gloria, we can't hear the people at home in here now. 
Direct monitor. Turn it off, ah, okay. How about try that, Gloria? Just say I'm, test. You got your mute. I'm though. here. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. It's red here. Dude. Oh, maybe this instrument. Let's see. Can try you it hear again, me now? Oh. Nope. Hold on. Could be that. Man, why would it just jump? Speaker at Scarlet Solo. Yeah, yeah, that's what we want. Just working. It was just working. We had everybody set. Maybe you try somebody. Have somebody else talk. Can somebody else talk? Let's see. Jim. Say yeah, something. I can talk. I can oh. hear you. Oh, Gloria's problem. Oh, so Gloria's mic is not working. Okay, so it isn't the big thing. That's okay, Gloria. So we'll let you work I, on I that. I heard her at first. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Yeah, I'm here. We can hear we you now. Anything. We didn't do anything, but all right. So now. Let's do Psalm 8. Gloria, go for it. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens from the top the lips of children and infants. You have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Thank you. Thank you. So here's a cool little learning with the Psalms is sometimes when the Psalms start with a phrase and end with the phrase, that's kind of a, that's definitely a bookend. That's a way to say what this Psalm is about. It's about the majestic name of God and God's sovereignty um, and is is what frames is what frames the the whole the whole deal I guess you could say um, a lot of things jump out to me in this but let me just pause and ask what jumps out to you as you as you hear this and if you're gonna say something longer then you I need to get you a mic if you're in person so yeah what, what jumps out at you? The creation story. Okay, so it's grounded in creation, all right? I think um, in this area, when the nature is so beautiful, uh, it's just really, and if you've been gone on a trip, and when you come home, if you're coming over the pass and you see the Olympic mountains after traveling through the Cascades and you just go, oh, God, you did such a good job. <laughs> nice, nice. All right, good. What else strikes you as we go through this? And I can move around with the microphone here. So anybody else in, in, in house? How about at home? It's just praise. This is a great praise. Yeah, so uh, uh, just the, the, a hymn of praise, giving God adoration, okay? Yep. It really speaks of the greatness of God. Mm-hmm. Yep. There was a, wasn't there a Michael W. Smith? Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. <laughs> good, good old Michael W. Smith from way back when... <laughs> Yeah. Cool. Wonderful. A lot of praise going on here. What else jumps out at you? I'd like us to take a look at verse four. What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? Yeah. Okay. So then you've got God's majesty. And then what is, what are human beings in the, New Revised Standard Version, it says, um, what are human beings, which is just trying to inclusivize man, that, oh, that understanding of man. What are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you should care for them? 
Yeah, so in the midst of the majesty of God, here are us human beings. And who are we? Yeah, okay, good, Jim. Yep. He did create us. Yeah, he did create us. That's maybe without being too um, simplistic about it, that actually is um, a profound thing that human beings are creations of God, you know, that we are, and so that puts us in our place a little bit, just saying that, good, good. Also, is it uh, in the Psalm also, one of the Psalms that you knew me in my mother's womb? So in the creation. Yeah, so that's a passage from Jeremiah uh, where it says that the, the prophet was known, you called me from my mother's womb. Uh, there is also Psalm 51, where it says, you know, um, I've been a sinner since <laughs> my mother's womb. Uh, Psalm 51.5 says that. So, yeah, good, good. Kathy's got something here. Well, I was just thinking, it came to me, the same part that Jim picked out, because it was in our devotion today. It's, it's where, is it on? Yeah, I think. Yeah, just closer. go closer. Yeah. yeah. And so it, it, we read it this morning, the one from church, and it had the Hebrews. It was in the, he, you know, the Hebrews quotes it. And um, it, it was today, they, they talked about that, that um, how we have, we are, you know, so God is, has made us so um, exalt, kind of exalted, and yet we need to realize that it is God who created us. We are just human beings, but he gave us Jesus, who he lowered, he humbled to become human, and then now has glorified. So I thought it was interesting to have that connection that the Hebrews used it, and it was in the Bible study for today. I didn't, I didn't know that. It was in the, the, the Christ Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, it's also a great gift that God gave us dominion over that. You know, it, it really calls on man to take care of it because he made this wonderful environment, basically, um, for us to live in and to do our best in it. And it really elevates man, you know, a little lower than God. That's a bit daunting. <laughs> check 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 so yeah those you brought up a, all of those those last two are really things we want to kind of dig down in more you know a little lower than god what is that yeah. um, you'll note that in um the translation that we heard which i'm thinking Jer uh, gloria was niv um it says heavenly beings here and not God. Um, and we'll unpack that. And then what is this dominion? Well, we need to have some discussion about what does it mean to have dominion over the world and the works of God's hands. We definitely want to sink down into that. Um, let's see. I do want to, um, let me go over here and this, let's see. Yeah, so it's Hebrews 2, 6, Kathy, what you're talking about, um, where um, this is, so it's always good to kind of look at how the New Testament works with the Psalms, so why don't we do that real quick, and then let's come back to that dominion word and, and what it means that we're made a little bit lower than God um, or heavenly beings. Uh, so Hebrews 2, 2, 5, now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere, um, I love that, because yeah. they know where it is coming from, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, of mortals that you... Lost you again. Can't hear you, can't hear you. Uh, 
Pastor Bill, we can't hear you. Got it. <laughs> Showing that you're muted. How about now? Yeah. Oh, that's better. Good. Now All we right. can hear. Yeah. Okay. Now I don't know when hear. I cut out, but um, oh, I'm, I went to Hebrews here. Uh, so where Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews is quoting this psalm. And what, what are human beings that you're mindful of them, of mortals that you care for them? You've made them a little while lower than the angels. And I was talking about how in the Jesus's world, there was a Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible of the Old Testament, of what we call the Old Testament. Reading that, and a lot of the New Testament writers were quite confident were reading from that Greek translation of the Old Testament, which is called the Septuagint. And when you look at the Septuagint, Psalm 8 doesn't say you made them a little lower than the Elohim, which is the Hebrew. It says a little lower than the angels. These are Jewish. The, the story is that 70 scholars, i.e. Septuagint, you know, all made their own translation. This is the legend. And they were exactly the same. You know. So it's one of those stories that you know, are used to kind of bolster the authority of the, the Greek Old Testament. And, but what that shows you is that those translators were going, wait a minute, a little lower than God? Is that really right for human beings, that they're a little lower than God? So what does the Hebrew here, um, a little right here, what is that Elohim? And the Hebrew word, one of the Hebrew words for God. And I'll give you a little bit of a quick overview on it. Are you guys still good at home? Yeah. Can you hear me still? All right. So I don't want to go on for too long. <laughs> Elohim is a generic word for God, like our generic word God. Uh, but it is in the plural. Now, a lot of people have said, well, does that mean that, you know, Christians, without going into great detail, um, because of the grammar and whatnot, Elohim could be gods, it could be God, it's, it can kind of go both ways. So when it's talking about Yahweh, which is the God's holy name, or, or like here it says, O Lord, this is Yahweh, our sovereign, uh, this is our, this is, so really, O Lord, our Lord. Is this this is the word um, Adonai, which is Lord, and this is God's name. This is that proper name for God. People, because God's name is so sacred, wouldn't say. So it, it would sound funny in English to say, Oh Lord, our Lord, but that's typically the way it's translated. So our sovereign, um, how majestic is your name in all the earth? So that name is used to talk about Yahweh. But sometimes Elohim is used to talk about these other heavenly beings in God's court. Um, Genesis starts out by saying, let us make the man in our city, right there, you know. And, and in one sense, it is the Trinity, but for Hebrew people, uh, for the Jewish people, um, they, they're thinking of God's heavenly court. It's the royal we, you know, like when the queen says, let us do this, you know. Um, well, it's really the queen doing it, but, or saying it, decreeing it, but, you know, let us do this. So, so that's different. Back to this verse, when we talk about what is our place, um, you have made them a little lower than God. So the New Revised Standard Version decides just to translate that very straight way, the way Elohim is usually, you'll note, says, let's see if I can put, get up my, um, the NIV, if I get Psalm 2 here, Psalm 8, thank you, <laughs> keep, me, keep me on the right path here, please. What is human them a little lower than the angels, the NIV says? That's interesting. So the NIV New International Version, okay. Yeah, okay. my old NIV says All right, so this is an older NIV. Revised and updated. Yeah, Kim? That's the new one. The old one says heavenly beings. Oh, the old one says heavenly beings. The new one says angels. So I kind of geek out on this. This is really fun because you've got a number of things operating here, and I hope this doesn't confuse you. I want to make it make sense about the Old Testament. So the new version of the NIV says, in essence, goes with that Greek translation, goes with the Septuagint, that IV um, goes with the heavenly beings, I guess. So Gloria was probably reading from the NIV that she's had for quite a while. So, um, <laughs> when it, yeah, Ethel May was saying, making a joke about how, how old 1980 is or something, <laughs> her translation, so for you, those of you at home. Um, so, 
So we've got a question, which, what do we go, what does this mean? And do we go with the Hebrew or the Greek? Does it mean angels? Does it mean heaven, the heavenly beings? It's used that way sometimes. So it's a very generic, flexible term. It is used about the Lord of hosts, the God of God, the King of kings, you know, Yah, other, other beings or other, other, you know, even other gods type of thing. So um, we struggle with this. Are human beings just a little lower than Almighty God? Or are we a little lower than the angels? You're... Well, are we talking about one person or two people here in this verse? What is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you care for him. Aha. Mm. Uh -huh. Are we talking about human beings? Or are we talking about the son of man? Which might be, you know, a, a, ter a messianic term. Um, and when we get to reading some of Luther, you know, how, how, do we see Christ in this? You know, um, they probably Hebrew people would have taken it originally. This is, you know, humankind, you know, man. What is man? You know, what is our place? What is our role? And that's where um, I think Kathy was talking about the word dominion. And that's been beings for now. Um, so let's see. Yeah, so it's interesting The NIV, want, this is where the, I'm sorry, not the NIV, the New Revised Standard Version wants to inclusivize everything. In other words, when it says man, we want to make sure people understand that. But sometimes... Doing that obscures something, and note where they translate mortals, they translate it as mortals versus son of man. So you, you lose the Christological thing completely by that inclusive um, Ising move. More, that's, it's talking about son of, the son of man, not the son of man, but just human beings in general. So, so that's kind of interesting, Kim, but thank you for asking that, asking that question. But let's go for just a minute. Let's let this be about humanity for a minute. And I think it is. It can be both. Um, what... What is our role? You have made them a little lower than the heavenly beings. Crown them with glory and honor. So we are made, created in God's image. We do have glory and honor. You've given things under their feet, all sheep, all oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the seas. Okay, now, this is something that the average postmodern person of today would say, that. Look what human beings have done with these verses. All the extinct animals, the deforestation, you know, you know, pollution, etc. They they feel and if you stuff, um, it's uh, you know, but they also amph. I want to say amphorphize animals a lot. You know, like they're I. There's this really great show on the whales, right? Uh, one of the things we stream that Katie and Sandy have been watching, and it's amazing, you know, what the pictures they can get now with, with the, you know, the, the drones, I guess, or whatever, flying over, and all the technologies. We can listen to their language and how they're communicating and all of this good stuff. Um, and it seems, and, you know, and I'm totally with that. I, I, you know, I, I, but the narrators, like, get into their minds of these whales, and it's like, you know, I'm like, are you sure? We're, we are taking... So a lot of people feel like this view that human beings are up here and the rest of creation down here is a huge problem because look what human beings have done with that. Um, look what human beings have done with that. So the answer is to put human beings and the creation, created world on the same par. And, that's, and you'll see that going on a lot. And I'm going to be honest and say, on one level, I don't blame them given that human beings have done a whole lot of the natural world because oh, after yeah. all we have what it says right there dominion now dominion is dominion right well, okay well now we have to unpack that word so what is our role well we're to have dominion over the works of god's hands what does that mean let's do a little word study i should have got this up ahead of time but we'll just do that and then i'll get this word study over here so that everybody hmm. I lost you again. <laughs> now good? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. That's Not now good. I at least I know what to do when that happens. That is interesting. Okay. Let's let's see if I can pronounce when I tried to use the Okay, are you still hearing me? You're still hearing me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Anyway, yep. let me just pronounce it myself. I do know Hebrew a little bit. So Mashiel. Mashile um, the, is, is the way it sounds. To rule, make someone lord. Now, let's look at how this is used then. 
get back over here to my little word search. I think that was it. Where'd you go? Five word study. There you go. All right. So, um, master, dominion, governors. Okay, so we get this. Now, um, some passages here. Um, I want to go down here to, let's get to the, oh, the Hebrew scriptures. So who, let's look at, let's look at this passage in 2 Samuel 23. The God of Israel is people just ruling in the fear of God. Um, so uh, this, if you, if you go right to the heart of it, dominion is what the king of Israel has over God's people. The king is to rule, and the king is to rule justly. What is a good king supposed to do? Is a good king supposed to exploit the people? Take care of them. That's right, Sharon. Dominion, properly understood, not from our sinful turned inward perspective. The Lord is my what? Shepherd. shepherd. The Lord, the king, that's, the king was talked about as a shepherd. And Ezekiel the prophet's so upset because the bad shepherd isn't taking care of the people. And God says, kind of gets frustrated, says, I'll be their shepherd. And if you remember um, when in Samuel, when the people want a king and Samuel's talking to God and God says, you know, um, and Samuel, you know, this is what a king's going to do. God knew that a king would exploit the people rather than taking care of them. But the people want a king. So God says, all right, which one? good luck with that. <laughs> From our fallen human sinful standpoint, we go, oh, goody. You know, it's like, uh, you know, a kid in a candy store. You know, it's like, woohoo, bring it on. No, be filled with responsibility, filled with stewardship, caring for something for someone else. That's what the dominion rightly understood means. So human beings, hearing that we have dominion in our you know, I can blast off this whole mountainside to get all the gold I want out of it or whatever. I mean, I don't, there's tough decisions to make around all that kind of stuff. But, you know, um, we, we need to think, of, think about these things, um, you know, uh, when it comes to being good uh, lords over creation, good carekeepers. Please, Doug. Yeah, so wouldn't that be, Peter um, would be uh, echoing the way God loves and uh, God loves people. So shouldn't the people love nature the way God loves the people? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, yep. I think so. I mean, if we look at how God cares and do. Now, I think that some people would still not like that um, because, you know, it still puts us kind of in charge. <laughs> it does put us above nature. And some of the Eastern religions, nature of all of that. So it's a different worldview. But, but I guess the point I want to make is, that the viewpoint that we just get to do whatever we want with creation because we're in charge is, is a misunderstanding of the biblical notion because of this today, um, because that's what they see. Um, but there are lots of environmental commitments from you know, the church and Christians throughout the world. So, but, but anyway, a lot of people want human beings to actually be lower. And of course, human beings, when we hear it, we, we want to say we're even higher. But anyway, so interesting. So I, I just wanted to do a, a little dig down. Um, uh, dominion ultimately belongs to God, but he's given that to us. He's entrusted that to us. Yeah. Yeah, please. Oh, yeah, Gloria. Well, I was just wondering if, if we have oh, to be careful. Your mic is not working again. Let's oh, see. Anybody else want to talk? Can you hear me? Jim, say something. I can hear Gloria. Oh, I can hear Gloria. <laughs> is anybody else trying to talk? Somebody talk. I heard Gloria. That is, this is just we heard obviously. Gloria. I heard Gloria. <laughs> Gloria, you're, you're doing fine. Can you hear me now? Back Mike. to room four. <sighs> Let's see. Here's a good try. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> success yeah. comes from failure. Yeah. <laughs> this has not been a failure. We're go. almost there. Okay, Gloria, go. Okay, I, what I was saying is, is, we have to be careful if we are going to be equal with creation, not ruler of creation. We got to be careful that we don't start worshiping creation. Yep. There you go. There you go. And there are, that is, that is the other pendulum swing. See? Yeah. No, great, great point. Great point. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I don't know what else more. We we can make an idol out of creation, can't we? Yep. Yep. So, but it, it it's in, it's interesting to me that when we mess something up, um, even more damaging <laughs> pendulum swing comes around. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the, you know, the fact that we've abused our what God's entrusted us to, that ushers in yet another problem. <laughs> and the pendulum swings. And uh, it's just like, I mean, I could, I could go on to things I see in the world where I see, wow, this one extreme messing things up, and what do we do as human beings? We, whoo, way over to the other side. So, um, and that, that circle. Yeah. Okay, good. Anybody else want to expand on that or add on to that? How you doing, Sharon and Sonny? You're doing good? Okay. Yeah. I'd like to go back to uh, verse oh, oh. 4. Hold on, Jim, one sec. Sharon, jump in there, and then we'll go to verse 4. Yep. I was just going to ask you how you feel about Adam's role in breaking God's trust um, in dominion over, <clears throat> over the earth. He said, do not, and Adam did. So how do you feel about that? Yeah. So um, you're talking about that original Genesis 3, right? Where God, God puts them in and says, but don't eat of the tree of knowledge and good and evil. Am I on target? Well, yeah. Or he, he actually gave him dominion over it and entrusted him as the first person. And he broke that trust. So when you... I don't know, maybe I'm off base, but it just came to my mind and I thought maybe he was the first one that set it up that we are, we're breaking that trust of dominion over caring for the earth. I mean, it's, it's, it's a stretch, I know, never mind. No, no, it's, it's actually not a stretch at all. Let's look at, um, let's look at this, um. Right, let's see, not the breath. And the Lord planted the garden of Eden for it, and the tree of life was in the garden, the river flowed. Um, it's not a stretch at all. This is really good because this gets right to this lordship question or um, not, not good to be alone. Um, this is the last bone of my bone. Um, ah, where is it that it talks about what we're supposed to do? Here it is. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. Um, there it is. Hey, to care for it. Yeah, to care oh, for it so and work, work it. Hand. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, You surely eat of tree, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. So um, what happens there in my view is that God gave... Adam, this incredible position of taking care uh, and stewarding the earth, gave him one limitation, and you know, gave human beings one limitation: don't eat of this other tree. And they said, "No, that's not good enough for us. We want to be more. We want to be, you know, in charge, um, and." We want to decide right and wrong, and we want, you know, we're not okay with being stewards. So um, I, th I think that's, uh, I, that's where my head went with your comment, Sharon. Is that kind of helpful? Is that on target with where you're going? Yeah, yeah, good. No, I think that's, so knowing our place again, you know, are we okay with being stewards? Okay, Jim. So... I go back to, I'm, I'm reading out of that, the Lutheran Study Bible. Yeah. We picked up from it. And that's the East, that's the, what is that? That's not the NIV anymore. I got rid of that book. Well, it's that. It somewhere, but. The, the translation is the new Revised Standard Version in the Lutheran Study Bible. Yep. Okay. What is man that you are mindful of him as man? We. I'm not trying to differentiate with the uh, humanity and what all that we're talking about. And the son of man that you care for him. There's, to me, it's saying two distinct different things. 
when I think back in terms of Jesus being referred to as the son of man. And in that particular instance, what I'm looking at is both fully human and fully God here on this earth and before. So the son of, I, I don't get, I don't get why this particular psalmist is making this distinction at that point about man and the son of man. So what you, if I can put words in your mouth, you can't anytime. <laughs> <laughs> You're asking a question. It's like, why would he repeat that phrase if he wasn't talking about the Messiah? Yes. Right? Yep. Yes. Now, other people would say, no, that's Hebrew poetry. And by the way, can you hold up your Bible? Because I think you're reading from, you might have the uh, Concordia Study Bible. Yes. You have the Concordia Study Bible, not the Augsburg one. There's two Lutheran Study Bibles. Anyway, so that one is the ESV, Jim. Yeah. English, English um, standard. standard version. Thank you. Um, for all, some of you who are new to Bible study, you're probably going all. Well, in my Bible, on the footnote, what is man? David considers the place of human beings in the council order, in the created order. And more important, their significance to God. Son of man is Hebrew from, I can't pronounce Beings enjoy a special relationship with their creator. Explain the special status and the role that human beings enjoy over the rest of creation. Which to me doesn't make it equal, you know, equal with creation or over. That's the way I see it. Okay. Did I confuse everyone? Uh oh. Okay. Lost. Lost to the I get it. No. Okay, there we go. He's got his mic off. Yeah. Better? Yeah. No? Yeah, better. Okay. And then now oh. I don't hear you guys because this, the same issue the same issue happens with the speaker. Yeah. So, so um, what is, you know, it, I think that you could see it both ways. But let's look at this Christologically now, if we can, okay? Yeah. I think it's we've got 20 minutes or so yet, and... It's time to do that. So here's another place that you can look at this psalm from a Christological standpoint. Uh, this is the word Luther, when he reads this psalm, sees, O oh Lord, this is God's name, this is Yahweh, are Adonai. So let's see what Luther has to say about this. Oh, I got to make it bigger. For sure. I'll read it to you. Anyway. We'll make it a little bigger if I don't lose my place. Yeah. So since then, this king is called Lord, our ruler. It follows he must be true God and true man at the same time. Yep. So you've got the God's name and then the human name for Lord. And, you know, so Luther sees Christ right in the beginning. Or if he were not true God, he could not be called Lord. And since God will not give his name and glory to another, as Isaiah says, my glory I give to no other for my praise to graven images. On the other hand, if he were not true human, he could not be our ruler, since our ruler must also be man, because he is to possess this rule and dominion over men. So this king is Lord, that is God, and our Lord, our ruler, that is man. This means he is equal to God and yet is also human. He's also man. So, so Luther sees Christ right in the very title of this psalm, which I think is cool. Um, because I think as Christians, we, we, we see Christ, um, the second person of the Trinity, all over the place. Is, you know, we want to be careful of that, but we... we I don't think we want to shy away from it either. So, um, you know, and and so, yeah. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. Uh, is this, the, again, is this part of what Jesus did? Um, you know, uh, it's, you know, to silence the avenger. Um 
<laughs> oh, yeah. Reminds me of uh, Jesus saying, come uh, like little children. Ah, uh, yeah. I can't quote yeah. well, but... Yeah, let the little children come unto me. Mm -hmm. Yep, <laughs> yep. And and Christ as a, you know, as this kind of, you know, think of Isaiah 53, this broken reed, you know, this this weak servant, you know, is going to then, you know, win the victory. And so that's that's what comes to mind a little bit for me with this too. Yeah, yeah. Good. Gloria. Well, if you think, can you hear me now? Yes. If, yes. You, if you think of, of uh, this being Christ, you know, go back to John where he says Christ made all things. All things are made through Christ. So um, this whole psalm can refer to Christ. Yeah, beautiful. Because yeah. if the word create, you know, the word was the creative word of God. The second, all things were created through that second person of the Trinity. Then when we talk about creation and that act of creation, you've got the creator and the word that brings all things are created through him. So yeah, no, that's great, Gloria. Yeah, really good. Really good. And if I can carry this on down to verse six. Please. You've given them dominion over the works of your hands as all of creation at that point, in my view. And I'm referring back to when he stands up in the boat and at his word, Jesus' word, he calms the sea and stills the wind. That's dominion. Ah. Yeah, interesting. So if this is about Christ, yep. then then uh, then maybe even we 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 have the question, is this a is this telling us human beings place or is this celebrating the place of Christ? Yeah. Yeah, you, you got me thinking there. Yeah. And and certainly that story that we heard last week uh, in church um, is, is an example of the Son of Man having dominion over all of nature. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, because then it goes back and it's, it is praising God, isn't it? So maybe this is about Christ. <laughs> and and it, so then Hebrews, when it says, I've made you a little lower, what are human beings that you are mindful? What is man that you are mindful of him? Um, the son of man that you care for him is the actual literal here. Yeah. Uh, you know, so now let's go back to that Hebrews text. Let's read some more of that. Um, so this is the quote. This is how Hebrews, what are human beings? Ah, the New Revised Standard Version is killing me on this. Let's go to uh, the ESV and go to Hebrews uh, 2.6 or 2.5. What is man that you are mindful of him or the son of man that you care for him? You've you made him for a little while lower than the angels. So note, you have crowned him with glory and honor, putting everything in subjection under his feet. Now in putting everything in subjection to him, he left nothing outside his control. At present, we do not yet see everything in subjection to him, but we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering death of suffering of death so that by gra the grace of God he might taste death forevermore for it is fitting that he for whom and by whom all things exist and bring many sons of glory should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering so so the writer of hebrews is saying jim slate is right on target <laughs> that this is about Jesus. This whole psalm is about Jesus. This isn't about anthropology of human beings, like what is our role in the world. Um, and note how note this little change here. For a little while, yep. for a little while, so Jesus wasn't for all times lower than the angels, but because he took on human flesh, 
here on Earth. Yeah. Yeah. So could I could I mess this up a little more? Oh, please. <laughs> How is it that the writer of Psalms, if we're attributing this to Jesus? How is it to the writer of Psalms will be knowing all about Jesus at that point when he wrote it? Yeah. Well, um, so this is a Psalm of David. Yeah. And it's in the first grouping of Psalms in the book of Psalms. And probably what we would say is that the writer didn't know who he was talking about. The, David is probably talking about, he certainly knows he's talking about God. And then he's, you know, from a Hebrew standpoint, he'd be talking about humanity. But it turns out David, you know, was uttering some words that he did not fully understand. The Holy Spirit made him do it. Sure. Okay. That's what Doug said. Um, Holy Spirit wasn't. You know, think of the other spot where Jesus points out in the Psalms where it says, My Lord said to my lord you know type of thing so there's mm -hmm. this other you know mm -hmm. who is this lord other lord you know um and so jesus himself points that out um and and tries to help the people of his day look back and see jesus in those psalms um but I, probably the answer would be that he didn't he didn't necessarily know um you know what what he was pointing to um that so we so this is how you can bring the two things we've talked about together today together is that yes it is talking about anthropology and what is the role of human beings but then there's this christological interpretation where we go oh this this kind of was jesus who was made for a little while now is that in the original let's go back um Let's go back one here to, is that, does it say for a little while? Let's see. Um, Which it doesn't in yours? Yeah. Do so that could be a Septuagint issue. Let's see. That could be the Greek has for a little while. Um, and you have made them a little lower than God, than Elohim is the literal here so um it doesn't say for a little while it says yeah. a little lower I don't like that. <laughs> you see <laughs> see this it's fascinating interesting yeah. interesting yeah. Okay. yeah so yeah please kathy here let me get you doug can you hand the mic over there to kathy you're right there yep i see another place where Jesus refers to himself in that psalm. And so to me, if he looks back and says, there you go, that's me or something, it really, he's looking at it sort of that way. But it, it says in, in Matthew that he was um, in the temple and healing and the children shouting in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David. And so, of course, the Pharisees, chief priests, and teachers of the law were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying, they asked him. Yes, replied Jesus, have you never read from the lips of children and infants you have ordained praise? Perfect. Whoops, sorry. Um, perfect. That's me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Jesus himself here on this one will... We'll see. when he enters the temple and isn't that palm sunday basically where they where where that is happening <coughs> yeah um and so here here you know these kids are shouting hosanna to jesus and and son of david and all of this and and the pharisees they're upset because Hey, Jesus, you should tell them to be quiet. They're committing blasphemy. You're just a human being. You know, shut them up. And Jesus quotes Psalm 8. Out of the mouths of babbling babes. <laughs> um, and so, again, and who is this about? Well, this is about God's glory, the Son of Man. So, yeah, perfect, beautiful. Yeah, we needed that text in here very much so. Yeah, love it. Love it. 
But I think back, we talked back in the beginning too, I still think we're still talking about the creation story here in one form or another. Sure. So Christ was created in the beginning, God's in the beginning. And if we're gonna accept that this was the spiritual utterance of David, that that was in the beginning. So this is, this is how it's all figured out in the beginning. That there would be the Son of Man who would come to Earth and pay and, and take on the sins of humanity, and that would be for a little while. Yeah, I think I'm probably way off, but that's why that's why I try to piece it together. Yeah, Christians all along have viewed that. Um, that this was not like God saying, oh, well, maybe I'll try this, that this was a part of the plan from the beginning. So now yeah. I'm going to stop my share for a minute just so we can see everybody. Um, what other ways, how does this help us then? Let's get to in the last five, 10 minutes. You know, this has been a, you can look at a Psalm in lots of different ways and how Christians see Christ in the Psalms. And certainly I think that's very on target here. Jesus himself does it, as Kathy just pointed out. Um, but, but how does this help us? Help us? How does it help the church? How does it help us today as we leave here? Beautiful, sunny, what is this called in Washington? A sunbreak? January. <laughs> I grew up in Phoenix. We didn't have sunlight. So <laughs> it's like 20 different ways to talk about what kind of rain it is. And then, you know, <laughs> sunbreaks. Liquid. We're having a lot. I come, come to Pastor appreciate Billy. sunbreaks. So anyway, how does this psalm help us? So right, there's no right or wrong thing. What do you take from this? What do you, what, you know, how is this helpful? Yeah. And remember, my wife always says, if you ask a question, you have to be quiet long enough for people to think. Well, uh, with a, with a, can you hear her? We got our problem here again. Let me fix uh -oh. the speaker. Okay. Let's try it again. All right. Can you hear now? Yep. All right. No, it just, it strikes me with it. The whole Psalm is about Jesus or whether it's about people, it's a gift, not a right that because it was about the creation and Jesus's role in it and what he would like mm -hmm. us to how we behave properly in in that. Um, and God went and looked for Adam and Eve even after he knew that sinned and and you know got kicked out. Yeah. 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 No, that's that. I love that. A gift, not a right. That that we that our our role is gift and not a right. I love that. Yeah, beautiful. How else does this help? I know what I have to say is I've never really delved into the Psalms, and I've never really been a. Some of them are just too long and complicated. So when we do do it like this, and we've been able to go through. Two of them. To me, what it does, it, it just re I'm so glad I belong to the faith that was given to me. I, it reaffirms that. Mm. It gives me substance. And I may not be able to quote it. I may not go out and preach and teach it. But inside, I know I'm right. Yeah. In yeah. what I believe. Yeah. I guess so, that's how it is. Oh, beautiful. So hearing, looking at this, seeing Christ in this psalm today, it just kind of gives that kind of anchoring that reaffirmation yeah excellent beautiful that's really helpful jim yep um sharon yeah uh you're muted yeah you're muted sharon Ask there you, go. There you Ask go. go okay um so it it also picking up on what was just said there's an order to things as god laid it out and that is as it is. <clears throat> and there's so many things going on today that want to reorder, change everything around, and reconstruct things. Um, that it's coming at us in many different ways. And I think it's important to have some sense of where did we start and what was the beginning <clears throat> and what is the order? Excuse me. <clears throat> because it, it comes, it brings you back to reality, I think got it as he sees it yeah i i um you know 
that you you raise up the question of what's classically talked about in the church as natural law, just the law of creation, the way things are ordered in creation, and um, you know what do we do with that? Um, uh, and if as we kind of surrender uh, to some degree, I guess you could say the biblical story grounding, um, you know what that kind of puts everything in flux then. You know, um, one person said, when you go against natural law, you have chaos, you uh, know, and uh, which is interesting. So now natural law doesn't save us, uh, but it, you know, do well, how do we look at God's creative work in creation and um, how does that inform what we do is an important, is an important question. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Helpful. Helpful getting that out of the psalm. What else do we take away today? Yeah, Kim. Well, oh. Oh, go ahead. Uh, you said Audrey once? Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Audrey. I was thinking that as you read this, read it in segments and not the whole thing, but like for verse three, when I, if I only want to kind of paraphrase it, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mine that you, what is man that you're mindful of him? To me, I can almost read that as man is beneath, man is beneath the creation. What God created was more, I don't want to say more important than man, but lower than man, I mean, higher than man. So when you, yeah, you know, please, that makes me think of the, um, in Matthew, when Jesus says, you know, if God regards the sparrows and the lilies of the field so much, how much more does he love you? So mm. I think that, you know, what, what I hear that, I think God created this majestic world and all of these things in it. And he created man, and look how much he loves people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What he has created, to live in what he has created. Yeah, ab absolutely. I think this gives us good cause to um, savor the beauty and the wonder, and then savor that he's mindful. God is mindful of us. That's one thing I take away. It's like, because I, I feel pretty puny. You know, there's how many billions of people in the world and that he could be mindful of Bill Crabtree or, you know, or of what's going on in my life or this church or whatever that God, you know, but God, that God is yeah. mindful. God yeah. is. He, he numbers the hairs on your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. What, what I was going to say is, um, we're reading Mark right now, and Jesus is kind of hidden. He's revealing himself, but people aren't understanding who he is. And sometimes, you know, when we read about Jesus' stories, we hear he's the good shepherd, he's loving, he's kind, he's all of these things. And when I read this psalm Christologically, he's God Almighty, you know. Uh, so it just... Um, we have this friend Jesus, and then we have this almighty Jesus. Yeah. And sometimes I think we focus more on the friend Jesus yeah. than the almighty. Yeah. We, if we think about Jesus having two natures that are 100%, not 50-50, you know, as the creed talks about, but we sometimes, we, we want to bring, look at Christ just from a human standpoint rather than this is, this is God, you know. Um, and, and, and I'll go one step further, Kim, on that. The, the, the misunderstanding of the atonement that I often hear, um, sometimes in the more conservative evangelical world, but, but I, actually in the unbelieving world, they look at what kind of God would sacrifice his son to not be wrathful about humanity anymore but what that misses is that his son is himself is god so but i've even heard pastors of my own colleagues 
put down the atonement because we don't want to go there. We don't believe in that kind of atonement. I don't know how you get around the Bible because it's all over the place. But the problem is that they're just seeing Jesus from a human standpoint and not as God. This is God's sacrificing God's self, um, in essence. It isn't, you know... Um, and, and then also, and when you put it that way, if Jesus, you know, if we're going to get run over by a truck, you know, God gets in the way and pushes us out of the way and takes the brunt of it. So, um, you know, so that, that's where I went. You're, you're absolutely right. Sometimes we just, we think about Jesus in earthly terms, but, and that's especially true with the atonement. So yeah, good, good, excellent. Very helpful. All right. What else? Anybody else want to? In a way, it might seem like uh, we have a lovely home and we're going to turn it over to the toddlers now. Let's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> they come and rescue us. Yeah. We have a, res we have a rescuer. <laughs> yeah. You make me want to go back to that real quick, Sharon, because I didn't really zero in on... Uh, out of the mouths of babes and infants, you've established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. Not only is it amazing that it's out of the mouths of babes, and Jesus, as Kathy, you know, quoted this Psalm, you know, 8-2 when, during the triumphant entry, but not only is that wild, but how does God silence the avenger through a word preached out of the mouths of babes, out of feeble human beings like you and me who can say Jesus is risen, you know, who can tell people, you know, may not be able to preach like Peter or preach like Paul, but can tell the love of Jesus that he died for all, you know. Um, that's that's pretty powerful. And note, too, how God gets his word done and God gets his work done is kind Good of work. hidden. It's not spectacular, out of the mouths of babes, not some king. You know, <laughs> and, and human beings, we want to look for all the spectacular and the glorious and, and, and whatnot. So, yeah, really good stuff. I'm loving these two songs. These our first two sessions. This is really good. This is exactly what I wanted to do. So um, next week, uh, I will um, be teaching, and then I'm going to be gone for a couple weeks of vacation. But I'm so thankful Kim Grasmick is going to step in and lead, um, and she's got some psalms picked out, uh, and uh, we'll keep, so you'll keep going. You don't get a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going to be tuning in via Zoom. And Kim, we'll have to figure this out. I don't know if it's my computer. You didn't have this problem the other night. with uh, with, uh, And I haven't had this problem before either. But anyway, we made it work. Everything's good. Um, the last thing I guess I want to say is how you define the problem dictates what you think the solution is. So how we understand human beings is really important. And I had a, my Luther professor, Bob Gazer at PLTS said, yes, human beings are sinners. We're messed up, we're fallen, et cetera. And the church typically talks about human beings that way. But we're also presumptuous saints. Yeah. We think, we get, look at me. Look at how great I am. I come to church every Sunday and I give 10% or I give 1%, whatever the standard is in the ELCA, it's an average 1%. So, you know, and I give this and I do this and I'm basically a good, but we get presumptuous. And I think this psalm puts us in our place. And then shows us that Jesus took our place um, for us and that that needed to happen. Uh, so, so we're both sinners and presumptuous saints. That it's a, Both sides are a problem. We put ourselves down too much or we elevate ourselves too much. But we are God's creation and 
Just lost you. Uh oh, <clears throat> sound went away. I got yeah. it. I got it. I got it. I got it. There we go. Yep. So anyway, we need it. What it tells us is that we need Jesus. Um, so all right. Yep. Um, let me close this with a prayer. Let me see our check you. Um, let let me uh, close this with a prayer here, and um, please continue to pray for Darling Yoakum as she's in ICU and just can't get those lungs to calm down after this chemo that she had. She's been battling cancer for many many years, but they tried a new chemo and evidently it's done a number on her lungs. So she's still in ICU and man, really have surgery tomorrow. I think. Um, and there's lots of other people on our hearts today. Um, I know one of our the kids of our congregations, Kai. Keller is battling wildfires and <laughs> out there as a hot shot. So lots of people we're thinking of, and, and thank goodness the Holy Spirit knows. Gracious and loving God, thank you for this study. Thank you for helping us to know our place and that you are mindful of us, and we are precious to you, as broken as we are. And yet we do pray that you will give us your spirit, that we can be good stewards. And then finally, thank you that this psalm is more about you than us and that it's about what you've done for us in Christ Jesus, who for a little while, you know, became one of us uh, so that we could be saved and healed and redeemed. So go with us and be with us um, and this week and continue to give us your strength and gospel of the self-revelation of you in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Great study. Thank you. Thanks, Pastor.